So then, let us now invite our very first speaker for session two, uh, which will be on developing, searching, and exploring the social investment models for the sustainability of ICH. So, managing partner of Heva Fund, uh, George Gachara, will give us a presentation. He is a creative industries expert, arts manager, and the managing partner at Heva Fund. Uh, he is leading a development and business exploration of the creative industries in East Africa and is providing leadership in creating long-term economic and cultural value in this dynamic sector. Some of his uh, recent uh, publications include Safeguarding Africa's Creative and Cultural Moment via the Creative Industries Policy Evidence Center and a report on the impact on COVID-19 on creative industries, options, and strategies. His main area of research Research is uh, resource development and governance in creative industries with particular focus in entrepreneurship, youth development, social innovation, and arts management. So let us now give the floor to managing partner of HEVA Fund, George Gachara. A big round of applause, please. Thank you so much uh, for this uh, generous um, introduction. Uh, thank you to UNESCO. Uh, thank you to the government of Korea and all the partners for this invitation. And also thank you to uh, Michael Fisher, uh, who has done a great job uh, in the previous session. I've taken so many notes and I've really benefited from his presentation on uh, metadata. Thank you. I have been invited here today um, on behalf of Hiva Fund. Um, to comment really um, around our perspective on culture, um, uh, intangible culture heritage on this beautiful day. So good morning to you, good afternoon and good evening uh, to whoever you're listening to us from. In the first decade of the 21st century, um, there was uh, increasing visibility of culture and creative industries across uh, my continent, Africa. And this has been said, or a lot of people have said that this is a renaissance or a renaissance in Africa. This so-called renaissance has been characterized by the growth of uh, per capita and household incomes across uh, the continent. Uh, we have seen aggressive, um, aggressive transformation of urban spaces, rapid adoption of digital communication tools, a growing um, uh, diaspora, and along with it, um, growing remittances from uh, the diaspora. We've seen increased foreign direct investment. But what has been most important of this uh, cultural renaissance is that um, there's growing self-esteem, there's growing uh, expression, and this is uh, seen through uh, our, the growth of our music, growth of our film, growth of our gaming, growth of our contemporary fashion and expression, along with other cultural and, 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 and creative products, which has been driven by the dynamism and innovation of young men and women across different cities in the continent. A renowned Cameroon philosopher, Cameroonian philosopher, Ashile Mbembe, is a guy I read and I, and I, and I respect, um, wrote in his paper, uh, which was the Africa in the new century, he said that this uh, renaissance has been rendered even more powerful by the convergence of two parallel developments. And he says that the first uh, development is the emergence of digital technology of the information age. And the second is the financialization of the economy. At least for us in Hiva, we exist uh, to, to continue some form of financialization of the culture and creative industries. Across the continent, young men and women continue to leverage their cultural assets and knowledge. Um, and, in, and, and, and this leverage is seen through design, is seen through vernacular inventories, is seen through music styles and poetry, is seen through crafting and traditional um, crafting technologies, is seen through illness and wellness practices, food preparation and cuisine styles, visual languages and storytelling, 
And these are the young men and women who are breaking the glass ceiling to make their mark in our continent and across the world. We've been really inspired by the expressions of artists like the Nigerian Banner Boy and uh, the Whiz Kid. I hope uh, you, you, you know of them. We've, we've worn the clothes of us uh, uh, and the designs of uh, uh, South Africa's Ladama, Laduma. We have the, we celebrate the visual arts of Kenya's Cyrus Kabiru. We enjoy the, the leather construction of the uh, Ethiopian designer uh, Meron. Uh, we drink the alcohol uh, distillation processes from Lola Pedro, who makes traditional brew and exports it around the world. We've seen uh, BMW co commissioning the likes of Esther Malungu uh, to um, design the, um, uh, the, the new versions of these vehicles. We read the likes of uh, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and so on and so forth. And you know, amongst many other African upshoots who have been emblematic of the first decade of the 21st century. But alongside these notable names, there's thousands and thousands of countless of founders across cities, across towns, uh, who make up the galaxy of the interconnected uh, enterprises, ventures and gigs and hustles, which I refer to as the culture and creative industries. These industries in turn provide livelihoods, they provide personal fulfillment to millions more, they define our contemporary urban lifestyles, and they serve to give us a sense of home, a sense of uh, identity here in the continent and abroad. What is more important really is that this new surge of, um, of uh, cultural and creative production has attracted uh, the curiosity of many around the world. We've seen uh, the African Development Bank uh, declaring that it is the year of financing creative and cultural expression. We've seen the likes of uh, Afrexim Bank uh, creating facilities for music, film, gaming, fashion, and entertainment. And for us at Hiva Fund, we've been doing this for eight years. We want to see, um, we're excited to see that uh, this new interest around the world in Africa's new expression uh, is, is, is getting confidence and the confidence not just for uh, within the culture and creative entrepreneurs, but from the commercial sector, from government and so on and so forth. It is important to consider that while these indus industries are materialized by market dynamics, they are at the same time providing transcendental services to their audiences, to their communities. That despite the tension between artistic practice, community uh, practices, and the commercial values, that they continue to serve and reward their audiences with the payoffs, which are not limited to reassurance, to confidence, positive emotion, cohesion, and an evolving aesthetic of ownership, um, a vibrant discourse of decolonization. And these are extraordinary services that intangible culture heritage continues to provide to communities, especially as we emerge from a crisis like the one we, we are facing around the world uh, of a global pandemic. Now, as we enter the third decade of the 21st century, we are confronted by deep shocks. These are disruptions uh, that are triggered by the COVID-19 crisis, which not, have not only slowed down global uh, commerce, but have also provoked deep, deep questions. questions. And these questions of how do we continue to do business as usual in the same posture? It is evident that we cannot continue. And while we pose these questions, um, we also are arrested by the reality that the culture and creative industries were helpful to everyone who stayed at home in this period. We listened to music, we watched films, we, our children played with toys for days on end. We preserved our food with traditional, uh, traditional um, practices. We, we, we enjoyed redecorating our homes uh, with, 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 uh, during the last year of uh, shutdowns. And we are now reminded at 
we are really reminded by the power of culture and creative industries. And going forward, this um, realization has to be realized that this expression should not remain just as expression, but it should become industry. To seize this understanding, we must quickly move from needing to be convinced of the viability of culture and creative industries uh, in Africa, in the developing world, um, and accept that uh, the opportunity constitutes an, in, an investment in the artist, an, invest in, an investment in the cultural producers of this expression, their enterprise, and that we must start as, a, as people who are in the finance space, as people who are in the development space, to start paying forward so that we can continue to produce the realities of what I dare say is going to be the most significant industry of the future. At Hima, uh, here in Kenya, we do not need to be convinced of this. We've been doing this for the last eight years. We've supported the growth of the music industry from the traditional side to the contemporary. We've explored uh, filmmaking from feature filmmaking to short form filmmaking, helping communities create, uh, get uh, capacities to do this. We've supported uh, development of gaming from console gaming uh, to, to, to mobile gaming using uh, culture and heritage stories and transforming uh, literature into games. We've invested in food and wellness value chains, in fashion and fabric production, in cultural festivals, in literature, in theater, and this continues. We've done this through um, tailored financial facilities, looking at how finance can respond to culture and creative industries. Our people uh, have acquired skills, have acquired technology, have entered new markets and found new audiences, have acquired new digital, digital capabilities, and have even started to, for, to, to, to start us uh, to, to systematize uh, some of the work that they do. This has meant that there's increased participation of women and youth in these new culture, lines of cultural production. We've seen the emergence of new products and new experiences. We have seen new languages and vernaculars coming to the mainstream space. We have seen new practices uh, uh, being discovered at the mainstream place. And there's now renewed, new, renewed um, esteem among the practitioners. While doing our work over the last eight years, Inclusion has been at the top of our mind. How do we include gender? How do we redefine uh, participation of old people and young people together? How do we bring on board uh, refugee communities? How do we bring on board uh, communities that are marginalized or are in the verge of uh, extinction? Conservation and preservation has also been at the top of our mind. How do we finance practices that reinvent uh, old positions? that bring old positions uh, into the contemporary space. Also cohesion and integration has been at the top of our strategy. How does ICH continue in the new generation to increase cohesion amongst people, especially in times of great distress, in times of, uh, of, um, of individualization of community spaces, of privatization of community spaces? How do we continue to broker dialogue between people? This has been at the top of our mind for the last eight years. What has been also clear is that there are things that we need to be aware and we have need to be careful about. How do we continue to uh, financialize the, the ICH space without dis disrupting um, informal capital? How do we continue to financialize creative and cultural uh, spaces without uh, disrupting community equity and community rights? How do we continue to financialize um, uh, culture and creative production while we, we support decentralization? How do we as intermediaries, as outsiders, continue to be sensitive at the values that we bring to culture and creative industries, including commerce, which could be disruptive. How do we continue to support generational engagement? These are some of the thoughts that we've gathered over time. Indeed, as we look forward into this decade, 
our commitment remains that we have to continue to build sustainable financing mechanism. We have to explore both commercial mechanisms and social mechanisms. We have to promote ethical engagements and we have to promote cultural and creative industries because these industries will continue to grow the, the ICH as we want it to be. It seems to us, ladies and gentlemen, that the next decade is going to be one of the most consequential periods of our recent history, especially in my continent, Africa. In the next couple of years, we, want, we are bound to witness increased pressures, disruptions, even new business models, disruption on supply chain, and even in the delivery um, of, 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 of ICH goods and services, especially as uh, the digital um, and information age continues to deepen in our part of the world. It is, however, necessary uh, for institutions like us, who are local institutions, to continue to be agile, to continue to uh, research, to continue to support um, uh, communities through research, through stabilization of effort, through helping them to reinvent new position. And only then can uh, we find new growth, can we support our communities to adopt new technology, can we discover new benefits uh, of, the, of, of the industries that we create out of ICH, and can we discover the new ways of living and in the new ways of working. Thank you so much for an opportunity to make an intervention, and I'll be available to answer any questions at the end of this rounds of presentation. Thank you.